the amazing artworks you've created of Africa and here in Dorset. Yes, when I was at school, I think it really, um, it started when I was in the infant school. I used to do patterns in a very systematically way. Um, most children at that age splodge about it everywhere, but mine was kind of all in sequence, and I'd start from the middle working out. And I took one of the patterns into school, and one of the teachers put the pattern on the wall. So the next day I did a different one. And the next day she put that on the wall. Every day I was doing a different pattern and it was a challenge for me to do something different. And we're using different colours, different shapes. And I, I remember distinctly having 37 patterns on the wall before the teacher took them down. Um, another thing that happened to me, I can distinctly remember now, every time I ate my wall paints, the smell. Because when I was very young, I think my parents must have bought me some oil paints. I just like the smell, <laughs> and I think, you know, from having some oil paints early on, then that was, um, that enticed me to, to, to use oil paints, um, and then of course acrylics came out later on as well, and then I learnt watercolour, um, and I did have a few health problems later, later on, um, where I had a gap, a family, mortgage, etc., where I wasn't painting, um, but my mother kept asking me to paint a tiger for her. She kept nagging me, nagging me, nagging me. And in the end, I painted a tiger for her. And after I'd painted the tiger, I just wanted to go to Africa and paint more and more. And I didn't stop. Um, and then my partner lately, later encouraged me to carry on painting as well. We understand that there was a horrific event that changed the course of your life. Can you tell us a bit about this? Well, to be honest, it wasn't just one event, there were several events. Um, in fact, it started when I was born, I was actually born in an oxygen tent, brought back to life. Um, and then, uh, I think age six, I had a car accident, uh, which damaged my pelvis. Um, and when I had my first child, um, my pelvis parted, because obviously it was weakened. Um, while I was in hospital in Northamptonshire, unfortunately, um, being given tablets to relax painkillers etc um, I got up in the middle of the night around about four o'clock in the morning um, didn't even know where I was oblivious to anything everything I think I've been given the wrong tablets or something and struggled to go to where the light was and uh, there was a nurse's room and she was out the back and I heard the footsteps suddenly coming in uh, jerked, jerked around to see what it was and slipped and fell, put my hands out to save myself and oh gosh, I burnt my ha hands on electric fire that didn't have a guard. Um, this meant that I had about then three years in and out of hospital having skin grafts. I had actually gained a place to go to college just before that um, and I just couldn't get there. Having gone down the job centre then to see what kind of work I could do, thinking art was a do dodgy subject, um, they turned around and said, why, why don't you come and work here? And I somehow ended up in the civil service for 20 years. Um, but unfortunately, I had a couple of bad relationships and um, couldn't sell a house for eight years. And this led to some terrible stress where I got cancer um, and had to have radiotherapy. And luckily, it worked. I was only a 31 at the time. Um, but unfortunately the radiotherapy affected my bowel and um, a couple of years after that I had um, bowel operations. Um, this was followed by a suspected liver cancer where six months I thought I was going to die and it turned out it was after a biopsy it was just um, a bruise and I'd slipped on a ladder. Um, and a few more years later uh, I was actually run down by a member of staff uh, but with a trolley uh, from one of the main supermarkets um, oh laden with heavy boxes etc so this put me out somewhat um, and then I believe a bit later on after that my grandson thought it was a bit of a laugh to pull the chair away from under my feet and I hurt my back and uh, um, had to have different scans and things on my back um, and then unfortunately out the blue to my complete surprise, 
the, um, the bone scan picked up a kidney stones and I've recently had kidney stones out. <laughs> so chapter after chapter after chapter uh, it feels like my health has been keeping me from painting um, and I'm hoping to bring a book out at some stage in the future something like how to survive as an artist <laughs> um, but hopefully I'm going to be alright now <laughs> You have a new love in your life a little birdie tells me he has a striking resemblance to Billy Connolly mm, I'm not sure if it's a new love in my life I actually met Clive 15 years ago and we've actually been together since then, uh, travelling throughout Africa, different parts of the world, taking photos. And, and Clive, I must say, has been a great encouragement to me, uh, not, on the, not only on the painting side, but supporting the business as well. And also, when I have been ill at various times, with personal care as well. Um, so I can't thank him enough for all the help and support he's given me. In fact, I think I heard him coming. Hey, hello there. How are you doing? It's nice to see you here. Chevy, wonderful to hello. meet you. All on TV. My God, hello. Just let me pat myself. Hey, I noticed that tennis ball from Wimbledon has just landed on your painting there. Wonderful. <laughs> it looks great. Imagine waking yeah. up to that. They're going to help. Lovely to see you again. Absolutely marvellous. Hello, Clive. How did you meet Hi. Sherry and how were you involved with the art world? Right, a couple of things. Uh, back to normal again, as you can hear from the sunny Midlands. Uh, I met actually Sherry uh, when I moved into a house in Burton 15 years ago and she offered me a beer across, across the fence that was no longer there and I gratefully said yes and that was uh, and the rest is history isn't it? Um, as far as the art business is concerned uh, what I try and do is all the the unseen heroic work you know, creating exhibitions, newsletters, uh, doing the administration and making sure that everything is spot on as far as the exhibiting is concerned throughout wherever we are. Sherry, tell us about the exhibitions you've had and the charity work you're involved with. Right, well I actually live in the Bournemouth area so a lot of my exhibitions are in this area uh, and in Dorset but I also have had exhibitions throughout the UK in Birmingham, the Licky Hills, Cambridge, we're hoping to have one in Surrey and even the end of this year we're, we've been invited to New Zealand to have an exhibition there in Christchurch, twinned with Christchurch. Um, so many, many exhibitions and what I also like to do is to work with businesses as well. Sometimes we can help businesses cafes in the winter when they're not doing so good we put on an exhibition and entice customers there so that also helps the cafes restaurants um, had various various venues and as you can see I'm at the mill at the moment which is run by the council this is a 10th 11th century mill uh, absolutely fabulous for showing my pictures and I've been here April June and August um, apart from running my venues, I also do one-to-one -one lessons, uh, especially for people that are disabled and just can't get up the house. So it's um, a satisfying um, um, art and craft that they can do in their own home. Um, apart from the one-to-one -one lessons, I do demonstrations for the art groups in the area as well. And with regards to charity work, we're always open to do any charity work, so if there's any charities out there that feel that they could benefit from me doing displays or auctions, um, please let me know. Um, we've done special charities for the Wildlife Fund, WWF, for Oak Haven Hospice, for Boo Charity, Women's Refuge, and several others, and also my partner, who does look alike for Billy Co Colony also does some charity work um, for cancer and different, different charities. We always like to work also very closely with the public. Um, I'd, I'm not the type of person that just put my pictures on the wall and that's it. I like to work with the public to actually talk to them about my prints, about what they represent and also um, I'm always usually painting at my venue so children can come up and join in and have a go um, and that's, that's what I enjoy. I hear you've been involved with celebrity commissions, can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, um, well my daughter is um, a very very good fan of James Blunt 
and we went to Paris to see him. And after the concert, uh, we met him in the crowd. He came out, and there was lots and lots of French girls there getting autographs. And I was literally pushed up against him for 20 minutes. And then he noticed my daughter, and he noticed her email on a T-shirt. And he went forward and said, thank you so much for all your emails, and thank you for your support and coming to see me in France. And gave her a kiss backwards and forwards and signed her T-shirt. And I stood at the side, dead jealous. All the French girls had moved back. She was treated like a star. And I felt very jealous. And I stood at the side, and I'm WKD900's mum, which was her email. <laughs> and he said, hello, mum. And then we got chatting, and I asked if I could do a portrait of him. And he agreed. And um, I said, well, don't I need authenticity or authority to do it? Get a life, he said. Just do it for me. So, of course, I did a huge portrait, original, and um, we later met his father, who's called Charlie Blount, and they gave me a fabulous letter, giving me, me authority to sell prints, and we raised money for his favourite charity, Médecins Sans Frontiers, and we still actually do that. We still actually do that. We're still selling some prints and um, cards, and I believe he's bringing a, a new album out at the end of the year. <laughs> Another venture that uh, I'm, I'm wanting to do and they've been given permission to do is um, Robbie Williams's drummer. He's usually on television with him, <laughs> um, but um, I met him in Christchurch doing some drumming sessions and knowing quite well. His name is Carl Brazil, but if ever you see Robbie Williams, he's in the background doing all the drums. I'm going to do a huge portrait and uh, do a collection and then hopefully um, put on an exhibition in London with all, several portraits and different things. Okay, Sherry, what's next? And what is your website? Well, um, we've got a database throughout the UK and abroad, and um, I'm a professional artist, so I'm booking venues continuously. I'm very, very busy, also with demonstrations and lessons as well. And I actually um, do commissions for people to suit their budget. So... Some people think, well, oh, they, you know, can't afford to get that done, etc. But I do, you know, for the little lady in the street who just wants a little pet done to huge landscapes. So I will do anything to suit people. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you both. And we look forward to more creative and fantastic, exciting works of art from you both. Thank you so much for being part of our talk. And we wish you all the best of luck for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interview, Andy. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. And my name is Billy Conn, if you need me. <laughs> Goodbye and good luck. <laughs>